All right, everybody, it's time to take a trip down memory lane and take a look at the 2010s, which I, I, uh, I regret to be the one to tell you this, but uh, 2014 was a decade ago, people. Think about that. Tomorrow, I want you to get up in the morning and remind yourself that 2014 was a decade ago and that you are not just inching one step closer to death every day, you are hurtling at warp speed towards death. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway, today we're gonna talk about some of the worst music of the 2010s, or at least the music that you think is the worst music of the 2010s. And we'll ask ourselves, was it really that bad? Was it really that bad? Or maybe, maybe was it actually okay? I asked you guys on Twitter for some of your suggestions, and so we will go through them. And really quickly, I also wanted to mention my Patreon. If you like what I do on YouTube and everywhere else, joining my Patreon really helps me do this full time and worry less about videos getting demonetized by YouTube or copyright claimed by labels. Patrons get all my podcasts and main channel videos early. There are members only channels in my Discord that I'm super active in. I also do giveaways. For example, I've been giving away a lot of Emos Not Dead merch. And you can also have me review your music, artwork, or anything else. All you need to do is join my Patreon at the $10 level, and then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, just drop it in the comments of that post, and then I will review it live on Twitch. So if any of that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description of this video, and I appreciate your support. The first one that a lot of you mentioned is Panic at the Disco, High Hopes. This is an interesting one because this was like their last big song after they'd been a band for over 10 years, almost 15 years. And everyone thought they were washed up, but Panic at the Disco, especially after their last song, last album rather, which legitimately did sound like Imagine Dragons right here. I can't do the AA and the stomp claps. Like that was by far the worst thing in the 2010s. But gotta say, uh, High Hopes, which was sort of their last album, and I think maybe their most popular song ever. This is when he wore heels. Well, listen, if Brendan did indeed wear heels in this video, I say there's nothing wrong with that. All you short kings out there, you do what you gotta do, okay? You do what you gotta do. So many 2010s anthem songs sucked. There were a lot of anthems in the 2010s, right? The hair is, um, that's the part I'm jealous of because it's been a long time. I was gonna make fun of his hair, but then I thought, wait a minute, if I had that much hair, I would do that too. And so really what I realized is uh, the only thing I'm making fun of here is my own bitterness and resentment. That's all. Always thought these guys and Fall Out Boy started sounding the same. Panic at the Disco started basically as like a Fall Out Boy knockoff band because they were all like Pete Wentz fanboys, or at least Ryan especially was like a Pete Wentz fanboy. So I think it's accurate to say that Panic at the Disco has always been kind of Fall Out Boy's little brother. Like, you know when you, you have like your friend or you have like a little brother that always wants to hang out with you and do everything with you and he's like two or three years younger and like when you're 12, and the little brother is like nine. You know, that three years feels like such a big difference. And you're like, oh, let's go ride bikes. He's like, oh, I want to ride bikes too. But like, he can't quite keep up with you. And you're like, oh God, just no, just stay home and go play fucking Mario tennis or whatever. You can't hang out with us, you little nerd. Yeah, wearing his Minecraft hat. Exactly. I feel like that's a panic at the disco is with Fall Out Boy right? Just sort of the little brother. It's nice. You know, he's nice and he's cool. He's just, he's trying a little bit hard to fit in. I like Panic at the Disco, but I think it's kind of the younger try hard version of Fall Out Boy. Mama said, Don't give up. But it's I gotta say, the song is pretty fucking good. It's a pretty fucking good chorus, isn't it? It's corny in that 2010s sort of way that, I don't know, I feel like the 2010s are going to go down as maybe like the corniest decade. Because remember, that's what gave us Gangnam Style and Thrift Shop. However, it got to be real. I think this song is pretty great. Yeah, the goaded, corny, upbeat 2010s anthem. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good. So I will say... I think this song holds up. It's very corny in that 2010s kind of way, but I like it. I think it's a good song. I think it holds up. Now here's one that lots and lots and lots of people suggested when I asked. Moves Like Jagger by Maroon 5, featuring your girl, Christina Aguilera. 
let's check it out. This is a case also where you definitely have to refer to Adam Levine as Maroon 5. Definitely, definitely, definitely have to do that. Like if you ever, if you meet him at Starbucks, you gotta be like, honey, look, it's Maroon 5. Wow, I can't, I can't believe I met Maroon 5 at Starbucks today. He was so nice. He was a little bit shorter than I thought, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was really cool to finally get the chance to, to meet Maroon 5. I'd still give up an arm to be with X-Tina, as you should. Valid reason to give up an arm. I honestly thought this was Bruno Mars until now. I feel like we're sensing a theme here. The 2010s was truly the decade of the corny, upbeat anthem. You wanted control, so we waited. I put on a show. Before we found out that Adam Levine was a DM sliding simp, it's true. Let's talk about that. That's the problem. I was a Maroon 5 apologist for a long time. Uh, like, I really like early Maroon 5, like their first album, I think is legitimately awesome. And I always thought Adam Levine seemed like a decent guy from being on, was he on America's Got Talent, whatever TV show he was on, he seemed like a decent guy, but turns out not so much. Turns out he's a shit bag because we found out a couple years ago that he was texting bitches while his wife was sitting there pregnant next to him. This is uh, him texting some, I don't know who she is, some like fitness thought on Instagram or whatever. The absolute Riz God right here. Here's what Adam Levine, the king of Riz, he said, it is truly unreal how fucking hot you are. Like it blows my mind. And she says, I mean, I think the same. Seeing you in person was like fucked. And then he says, you're 50 times hotter in person. And so am I, ha ha ha. And then he says, I may need to see the booty. Fuck. <laughs> I may need to see the booty. He did seem nice and turns out actually not cool. But this is my favorite one, though. This is my favorite from the Riz God right here. He says, holy fuck, holy fucking fuck. That body of yours is absurd. <laughs> it does hurt to read. It does. <laughs> it hurts to read. Um, but that makes me feel a little bit better about making fun of this song because, uh, yeah, not a not a not a great guy. Down horrendous, yes. Adam Levine just down tremendously to the point that he he said, I may need to see the booty. <sighs> I'm offended by this. I understand he's sort of trying to be like Mick Jagger, but uh, this it makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm going to use a word we're not supposed to use right now. But there's a lot of sissy energy right here that I'm uncomfortable with. I'm sorry. I know I'm probably not supposed to say that, but it makes me uncomfortable. You know what I mean? No, it's, it has nothing to do with being gay. It's not being gay. It's being a sissy. You know? It's different. Like, being gay is totally fine. There's nothing... I have Like, that doesn't make me uncomfortable. I have no issue with being gay. It's being a sissy. Like, when China banned sissies... <laughs> China orders broadcasters to ban sissy men it deems aren't masculine enough for, for TV. It's an act for the video. I believe it. I believe it. I still, I'm uncomfortable with the amount of sissiness. Anybody can be a sissy, gay or straight. It's, it's a mentality. Exactly. It has nothing to do with the sexuality. Nothing to do with that. It can't do it. I can't even make it to Christina's part, and you guys know I'm a big X-Tina fan. Yeah, I hope Adam Levine at least got to see the booty. Next up, a controversial one that somebody suggested, Rap God by Eminem, which I feel like a lot of people are going to be upset about this one because if there's one thing I've noticed, it's that uh, rock fans really like dad rap, and uh, Eminem, I'm sorry to break it to you, is dad rap. The only thing that's more dad rap than Eminem, I would say, is Jay-Z. Like, to me... Jay-Z is the absolute pinnacle of dad rap, and Eminem is pretty close to it. The other thing that sort of um, is difficult about Eminem is, you know, for the kind of people that, you know, a lot of metal people that are like, uh, I don't really like rap, but, you know, Eminem's pretty cool. You know, and that Tom McDonald guy, you know, he's got some interesting things to say. And you're like, hmm, what's the common denominator here? <laughs> What do they have in common? I wonder. An NF. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I was gonna go easy on you. They said I rap like a robot, so call this me is rap. bad. It's really rap, bad. It's, it's really, jeans. really bad. I got bad. a laptop in my back pocket. My pinnacle walk when I hat cock it. Since Bill Clinton was still in office with Monica Lewinsky filling on his nutsack. Oh. I'm an MC. I mean, like, Bill Clinton jokes in, what is this, 
2013. He got mad flows here. Of course he has mad flows. Of course he does. Like Eminem, without a doubt, is like the best technical rapper of all time. There's no question about that. Unfortunately, his music is terrible. That's the problem. Feel like a rap guy. This is terrible. I'm sorry. This this is worse than I remember. Yes. This is really bad. I'm sorry. It is very cringe. Logic does white rap better. I don't I can't tell if you're joking or not. Either way, I'm on board with it. And of course, this part, the white guy raps really, really, really fast part. And uh I don't know what it is about like white guys that feel a desire to rap fast like why what is it about my people that you know it's like do they think they're gonna like prove themselves to the world by rapping really fast i don't i don't know lyrics coming at you with supersonic speed have i heard of busta of course we can't run fast so we rap fast there we go okay uh, yeah, I'm sorry, people. I know this is not going to be a popular one. I just don't think Eminem's music is good. The first Eminem album, I think, is good. That's legitimately, like, good, catchy music. But, you know, I think he has the same problem as basically every other battle rapper. Battle rappers make really, 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 really bad music. It's the same thing as guitar nerds that are really good at playing, but they can't write a song to save their life, right? And like, I don't know, the only battle rapper I can think of that's made music that's really even tolerable that I'm aware of is uh, Dirtbag Dan, which is like, his music isn't like amazing, but I think it's decent. So yeah, just think uh, battle rap, not a recipe for good music. And uh, I'm sorry, I know the comments for this are gonna be very angry because rock fans absolutely love Eminem, but I think it's bad. This song is really, really, really bad. I'm sorry. It does not hold up. And last but not least is uh, Selfie by Chainsmokers. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. It's hashtag Selfie is the name of the song. Anytime you use a reference to like a current pop culture moment, it's pretty much like guaranteed that the song is just going to age like milk. It's going to be dated within like a week. Just the same as like all the COVID videos or in all the COVID songs became dated, you know, in like four months. Sounds like Garage Band, right? When Jason's at the table, I kept on seeing him look at me while he's with that other girl. Have you guys heard about selfies? Have you guys heard about this? It's like, oh, I like this shot right here. Directed by Dan Schneider, who he decided to linger on uh, on the feet. Have you guys heard about selfies? Do you know, that's like, if you take a picture of yourself with your phone, they call it a selfie. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? And then you can post it on like, uh, there's this app called Instagram that a lot of people are using now. Yeah, so I don't know. I post a lot of selfies on my Instagram. Like, what do you think? The Schneider do you, do you think cut, yes. Pretty? But first, let me take a selfie. Oh, I miss this era of Instagram. The era when, like, the front-facing cameras were really bad, and so everyone would use all those, like, crappy Instagram filters that are probably still in there, but I don't know if anybody actually uses them. But yeah, I miss that. When you would, like, take a picture of your lunch and put like four filters on it. I miss that. I want old school Instagram back. Now, even before Visco, 2010 legitimately feels like it's older than 2000 sometimes. It's true. It's like, this is such an amazing time capsule of how fucking cringe, like 2013, 20, oh, selfie sticks. That's right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. This is like everything wrong with millennials right here. Millennials, I'm holding you accountable for this, okay? <laughs> you got some explaining to do, millennials. You're responsible for this. Consider this. In 2013, 2014, whenever this was, this was like the pinnacle of like white millennial culture. <laughs> this was like the hottest shit in 2014. So millennials, this is, this is, uh, this is what represents your generation, millennials. Explain yourselves. <laughs> I want to know what's up with all these people now in this video. I miss this aesthetic, though. I'm ready for this to come back, wearing business casual to the club. Yeah, I'm ready for the early 2010s to come back. I'm into it. I like it. Oh, wow. Look at this neck beard. That's an incredible neck beard. Uh, I say bring back millennial cringe. I'm ready for it. I'm over Gen Z. I want a 2013 revival. Bring back Starbucks and Uggs and scarves bring back early instagram bring back crappy generic big room edm i'm here for it i'm ready for the 2013 revival i'm ready for it all right that does it for this edition of the worst songs of the 2010s join us next time for another edition
<laughs> I may need to see the booty.